In this video, I'd like to go over a frequency chart or a frequency table and to illustrate the various information that is presented in these types of tables. So in this particular table, we're told Sam was asked by his doctor to measure his pulse rate every hour for 12 hours. He organized the data in the following chart. Notice, if we look at our first column, we see the various measurements that Sam received. We have the pulse rate for 12 hours, over 12 hours, I guess we could say. To the right of that column is the frequency. So if I were to interpret this, I would interpret it in the sense that 76, he had that pulse rate two times. He had the pulse rate of 78 four times, 82 two times, 84 one time, and finally he had a pulse rate of 87 three times throughout those 12 hours. That's what we mean by frequency. It's the number of times that that data value took place or was measured. The good thing about these frequency tables is that they organize the information. We can you know, deconstruct this, if you will, by just, if we wanted to write it back in its raw data form, we could write 76 two times. That's how many times it was it occurred. 78 was four times. So 78, 78, 78, 78. And I'm actually just going to stop there because there's no need for me to continue that. But I just wanted to illustrate that that's we could re re put this back into its its raw data form if necessary. So that's what we mean by a frequency chart or a frequency table. It's telling us how many times that data value occurred. The next column is relative frequency. Relative frequency is telling us information relative to the entire data set. So if we look at 76, we have 76, it occurred twice, and it has a relative frequency of approximately, if I were to round this, let's just round this to approximately 0.17. What these numbers are in the relative frequency column, these are percents that have been written in decimal form. So these are percents in decimal form. So if I wanted to rewrite them as percents, this would be approximately 17 percent. This one would be approximately, if I move the decimal point three to the or two to the right, this would be approximately 33 percent. This again is approximately 17 percent. That's what we mean. It's giving us a relative measure. 76 occurred relative to the, all the other measures 17 percent of the time. 78 occurred relative to all the other measures 33 percent of the time. So how could we possibly, if, if and we're actually going to construct this in the next video further on in this module, but if we wanted to actually create this column, what we're going to need is the total number of, of data values. So if I were to sum 2, 4, 2, 1, 3, I would get 12. So if I take 12, that's my total, right? That's my total number of data values. And to get this relative frequency column, what we're going to take is the number of times, the frequency of that particular value. So if we wanted to do, let's say we want to do 76, and we wanted to find the relative frequency of 76. 76, its frequency, it occurred twice out of a total of 12 observations. So if we were to take 2 divided by 12, you're going to get approximately 0.16 repeating, which is what they have here, except they rounded the last one. So that's what we mean by relative frequency. Don't worry, we're going to be constructing these shortly. The next column is cumulative frequency. The word cumulative, you can think of that as adding as you go. So here, if we want to find the cumulative frequency, you're looking at all the data values up to 76. So 76 occurred twice, and everything before 76, well, there was nothing before 76, so that also occurred just two times. 78. 78 occurred four times. That was its frequency. When we look at the cumulative frequency, we're looking everything up to and including 78. So we're not only going to be looking at the frequency of 78, but we're going to be looking for all the, the frequencies of the values before 78 as well. Well, the only other value here is 2. So 2 and 4 make 6. That's the cumulative frequency. That's if we sum up all the observations, the frequencies of all the observations up to 78, we get 6. 82, notice 82, we have two frequencies of 82. That's how many times it showed up in our data set. 
And we know, just by looking at the cumulative frequency before, there were six values before 82. So now if I just take the six values before 82, add the two frequencies, or the, the two values of 82, I get my total of 8. So what we're doing is, as this column is, is going down, we are adding the frequencies. Until finally, 12, that represents all of the values, including 87 and before. So this last part here should be the total number of values, which is 12. Finally, the cumulative percent of total. This is taking the cumulative frequency and dividing by the total. So for example, if we were to find the cumulative percentage for 82, we have 8 that occurred at 82 or before, divided by the total, which is 12. And then if we were to multiply that by 100, we would get our cumulative percent, or 66.6%. There are 66.6% of all the values, all the observations, are 82 and below. In the next few parts of this module, we're going to construct one of these by hand, and then we're going to construct one of these frequency tables by using StatCrunch.